I'm Kevin O'Connor for This Old House. For the past several months, we have been working with Homes for Our Troops, an organization dedicated to providing specially adapted homes to severely injured American veterans. Over the course of our production, we met many servicemen and women across the country, and we were amazed by their strength, their humility, and their dedication to our country. And so to honor the service of those brave veterans, and of all veterans, we wanted to share their stories with you. Army Staff Sergeant Matt DeWitt is the newest member of the Homes for Our Troops family. Welcome home. Where were you in the Army? You were a Staff Sergeant. Yep. And your job was what? I was a 19 Delta, which is a cavalry scout. Mm -hmm. It's basically reconnaissance and uh, the eyes and ears on the battlefield for the commander. So, Let's talk about um, the night you were injured. We pulled down the Sturt Road and just a uh, RPG came in and hit in front of the truck. and. Uh, you know, I was on a, I had a thermal site and everything. I'm scanning and scanning, and I didn't, I didn't even see him. And by the time I was turning the gun to look somewhere else, the second round came in, and it either hit the gun or the sight on top of my weapon, and just blew up right there and threw me backwards on top of the turret. What is it that you're feeling and sensing at this point? Uh, nerve pain and metallic taste of blood and everything. It's like kind of metal. It's all you really taste like feel and stuff, it's kind of weird. But uh, yeah, after that, uh, there was a medic in one of the other trucks that was on, on the other side of the cordon, so he was there fast and was able to administer the morphine and everything and had me all bandaged up like a mummy from there. And uh, then, you know, the helicopter came and medevac me to into the outside of the Baghdad where the field hospital was. and. You know, they loaded me off the helicopter and it's coming in and, you know, they started doing a triage on you, I guess. So they're putting IVs in and doing all this crazy stuff. And, you know, I heard the doctors talking, you know, going to have to amputate them. And I just kind of went ballistic right there on the table and they put me out instantly. So, and uh, I guess it was like a little over a day later or so, I came to the nurse there. She had me look down and said that I amputate them. And, you know, it kind of shut down again. It's not a, I don't, you can't even explain it really. It's just your body shuts down, I guess. It's kind of a weird feeling when you go from just, you know, you took over a country, you know, and liberated hundreds of thousands of people and then feel like you're on top of the world, like indestructible. And the next instant you're like nothing. You're broke, gone, and don't know what the next step is, so. So obviously you've got the physical wounds, but the psychological damage had to be severe as well. Uh, for me, I guess a uh, severe depression and uh, not knowing what's, what you're gonna do, what's the next step and stuff. So after I left, I went home and I probably really didn't do anything for a year. And uh, a friend came, took me to a, a NASCAR race actually. And you know, I was like, man, we gotta get doing something. So after that, I drove down to Georgia and. Saw the rest of my guys when they were back and came home after that and uh, got an apartment and just started doing my thing, I guess, trying to figure something out. So there was a low period, but you came back up out of that. Yeah. I mean, looking back on it, it seems like such a waste of time, but, you know, it's something I needed to go through, I guess. You want mustard? Yeah. When my son was born, it definitely changed the dynamic. Someone else to care for and take care of. and. Definitely, I guess, improved my life too, you know, just one of those steps you take in life that makes it better, I guess. I've got two crazy little kids right now running around the house, so it's definitely a full-time adventure taking care of them. Whoa. Where's the new car? That one?
Matt DeWitt was a staff sergeant in the Army when an RPG struck his truck and almost cost Matt his life. Here's another one. Upon returning to the States, he was fit with prosthetics and met his wife, Kat. Two kids later, Matt and Kat have a home in New Hampshire. Even with prosthetics, he doesn't let it affect him any. Matt doesn't see it as a full disability. I mean, it is a disability, but he still finds ways to be able to do those things, whether it's functioning the tool a different way or you know, positioning it a different way to make it sure that he can do what he needs to get done. The new house, how big of a change is that going to be for your lives? The new house will be a, a great change, a whole 180. It'll be a brand new beginning for us. With all its adaptations, it'll make it a lot easier for him. In what ways? Like, give me some, a couple examples that you guys are really looking forward to. Um, the doors, you know, with the automatic entry, Matt won't have to worry about using a key. It's, it's a lot harder for him to turn the keys for him. Right. Um, giving them the baths, you know, having the temperature gauges for the water. It's, he doesn't have to worry that the water's too hot or too cold for the boys to get into the, the tub or the shower. Yeah. Um, it'll be a, lot, a big relief for him not to have to worry about that because that's something that we take for granted that he can't test. Right. Um, or even making him lunches. The cabinets will have a pull-down shelving system in them that will make it a lot easier for him to be able to reach things in a position that is better for him to use his arms. I commend homes for our troops and all who contributed to providing Sergeant DeWitt an American hero with this home adapted to his needs. Thanks for Homes for Our Troops for, uh, I don't know, accepting me into their program. Uh, I mean, it's been a unique experience getting to have the opportunity to be on this old house too and working with all of them. I don't know, just thank you. <laughs> <laughs> After being injured in Iraq, Matt went through a very difficult period emotionally, but found that bicycling offered a much needed therapeutic outlet. He found a second home at his local bike shop when he met Jared McClary. Hey, Jared. Hey, Kevin, how, how are you doing? All right. Good. So uh, you're running the shop here. Yep, uh, yep. It's actually where you met Matt? Correct. Matt came in one day, and uh, obviously it's pretty striking when he first walks in, yeah. uh, seeing a guy that rides a bike uh, with, well, no arms. Had you ever seen that so, before? No, not at all. Right. Not, a, not a bilateral arm amputee. You know, so, we see our legs and stuff like that, or one arm, but not, not a bilateral situation like that. But uh, what else is going on? Anything else? Yeah, maybe just check the tire pressures, I'm sure. They're and what was he looking for as a customer? What did he want you guys to do for him? You know, uh, at first it was just the small things that you would look for, you know, tubes and tires and stuff like that. But then eventually it progressed into actually me being his fitter. So actually putting him into the proper body position on his road bike. Right. So he starts off as a customer, but eventually he graduates to almost a colleague because he rides with you guys. Absolutely, yes. When he first started coming in, he was just a group rider with us. Mm -hmm. um, so our group rides are on Tuesday nights. Um, basically everybody comes in. Uh, starts milling around. It's a very low-key atmosphere for, for the ride. Um, it's a very social atmosphere, too. So people come in and start to hang out. Matt, raise your arm. <laughs> you're going to say hand. I was going to say hand. <laughs> <laughs> keeps up. He doesn't just keep up. He, he buries us. <laughs> he buries you guys? Yeah. Matt is an extremely talented rider. And yeah. it's not just, you know, coming out here and going for the group ride. His competitive edge and nature comes out very much when he's on two wheels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, knowing Matt on both a personal basis and in a cycling relationship, you know, I know that he really comes out of his shell when he's on two wheels. Hey, Matt. Uh, How are you, man? Hey, Kevin. How are you doing? Uh, so I heard part of your story from Jared. He's a big fan. So what is that like to go out there and ride with them? Well, it's been a great part of my recovery and healing and the, I don't know, physical and emotional states, you know, riding the bike. Yeah. So tell me about the adaptations to this bike specifically, because I, uh, you know, as we know, you have to shift gears, you have to brake. These are things that I do with my hands, I do them with my arms. You don't have that advantage. How do you do that? Well, for the shifting, I still use my hands, and I have electronic shifting on here. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, when I'm riding, I'm grabbing onto the top two where the hoods usually are. And then when I want to shift, I just pop off and hit one of the top shifter buttons here and shifts up and down and the 
moves the chain ring, so that's how I shift. Can you show me how you brake? Uh, for the braking system, we've got this here on the back. It's just kind of like a bar that has a cable splitter that attaches to the front and rear brakes. And they're kind of set up as a 60-40. And so you're just pushing this back with your butt. You're sliding back on the seat to yep. activate that. Yep. I mean, how natural is that? Uh, it's pretty natural once I've got it going, you know. It's yeah. kind of felt awkward at first, but you know, you got to stop, so it's the easiest way for me. You do have to stop, yeah. don't you? <laughs> To have no arms, not the use of regular shifters or you know regular braking systems, right. and to be able to go out there and do what he does is it's it's pretty amazing. Athletically, he's doing more in the operation of his bicycle than we are, but I think it really unleashes what he can do. It's pretty intimidating. <laughs>